Boom. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan, and we are again sitting down with Ari Nazem. Ari, what's Hello. up? Thanks for coming on for a second straight episode. <laughs> How My badass pleasure. of you for to, to join us for two straight episodes. That was episode three, four, five. We talked with Ari about his life and about fulfillment and sustainability in finding lots of meaning in life and building out systems that facilitate that. It's a really solid episode. Go check it out, everyone. Now, after immediately after that episode, Ari is like, Let's talk. I want to ask you some questions. So now Ari's going to ask me some questions. I personally was like just drooling with how smart Ari is as a 19 year old. Like, if we had more of people that are young and smart like you building the future, wow. yeah, that's, that's how Thank I feel. You. And, and um, we're going to build that future that um, fosters more of this, of this um, like just, you know, adolescent just brilliance. And that's going to really push us forward. So, Ari. Jump us into your questions. Let's do it. Awesome. Okay, so you've, you've talked a little bit about how you really like thinking about how to update civilization's code. Can you just give us a preliminary like, definition of what you mean by that or what, what you mean by code, um, how, how you would define that and how you would define civilization and, and kind of that process? Okay. All right. So let's, that's great. That's a great place to start. We are very obsessed with thinking about things like the current code of civilization and you know and how to update that to maximize flourishing let's call that the objective now that is already a very complicated thing that was just said so let's break it down with the first part which is civilization and code okay so i think probably one of the easiest um, let's say algorithms or loops to understand in the in code is that your heart beats a hundred thousand times a day sure okay so we can start with something quite simple and easy like that uh, we can then do things like say that the uh, earth is 93 million miles from the star okay okay so that's another very uh, uh, mathematical way of seeing from the biological just right here at sure. this level all the way to the uh, star system level okay so that's what we mean by civilizations code things like that then there's obviously even more complex code like 8 billion of these human animals and how they interact with each other in economies and social fabrics and political spheres which add a ton of different complex code that actually makes that happen but you can kind of potentially even think of something like when you when you when you when you see that 90 percent of all world trade currently happens across seas and then you think about how a good gets manufactured resources are are made for that good that goods manufactured that good is shipped somewhere that good is then sold somewhere and that good is then consumed etc you can kind of follow a like a codified process of it going from a specific place mm -hmm. being shipped across consumed in another location there being a financial transaction for that entire process okay so yes so go you ahead. would say so the kind of the, your heart beats 100,000 beats per second and the... Um, 100,000 times a day. 100,000 times a day. Yes. Yeah. 100,000 times a day. Yes. Um, and the earth being a certain distance from the sun. Yes. You would consider that in the same code as like political entities and as like culture? Yeah, this is a very good question. So let's, let's take it by a... Uh, let's, let's, yeah, sure. Let's, let's break it down into, into, into everything falls into the code. Okay. okay. So every so your definition of the code everything is everything. everything is in it. Okay. Everything. All that is is within is in the, the code. code. Fantastic. Okay. okay. All that is is within the code. But then the code can be broken down into these sections which Got we it. can observe here with heartbeat is a very, you know, biological thing. Right. Um, the distance to the star is a very uh, like a static e thing, right. not, yeah, exactly. It's 93 million ish, almost all the time ish, right? right? So, um, so by civilizations yeah. code, yeah, that's the complex. So stuff. you're you're not talking about you know changing the distance between the sun and the moon and stuff like that. What you're talking about is 
the the cultural code that we're running in yes so now that is the more difficult code right, right. because i think that uh to to talk about how eight billion human animals interact with each other and augmenting the code let's let's take an example the we talked about this in the last episode that we did mm -hmm. how the the transition to uh to for for our species to to agriculture and what that did right agriculture was a massive change in code right okay right. Absolutely. so that's how that's kind of like a, maybe a way to you know to think about things is like okay the domestication the then the the domestication of other of other animals right. and of, of land over and over again for those right. soil systems. But then also us being less of wandering, us wandering less, us building out, you know, the communities outward. But agriculture is only, you know, one of so, so many. Right. Um, you know, language and the wheel changed code, fire changed the code, but then that goes all the way up to, you know, to, to automobiles, antibiotics, commercial airplanes, photography, right. the internet, personal computers, all those things also did massive changes in code. Got it. And then one of the things that I think is very important to address is I believe we can objectively decide as a civilization which advancements in code were what percentages of those advancements were malevolent and which ones were hmm. benevolent hmm. so let's take um that that's an interesting yeah that's an interesting idea because it's hard to know you know it's hard to know um when it's created what the effects benevolent or malevolent may be right because what we were talking about in the last episode was um, social media and smartphones and kind of how these technologies are influencing the youth and if you think about it when it was created i think a lot of people say you know we're uniting the globe i think when people were going about making the internet they said you know we're connecting the world it's going to be unlimited access to knowledge and all this stuff and what you've seen is that is true but where's most of the imp internet traffic actually going, right? Um, and what percentage of that is actually to access all this like knowledge and this academic stuff and how much of it is to um, clickbait and how much of it is to yes. like ISIS or terrorist groups that are using it as a platform to amplify themselves or, or um, other things like that. So I think, there you go. I think, you know, maybe from, if you were at like a God's eye standpoint, maybe you could kind of see the malevolent, malevolent yes. thing. Yes. But I think it's something that's constantly in flux and it's changing based on how people are using it um, and kind of the direction it's being taken. But, but it's a really interesting concept to think yes. about. Um, so now take exactly what you were just saying. Take yourself, okay, you're in all that is. Okay. You are looking at the code of all that is. And you are taking this God's eye or this, you know, 10,000 foot, whatever perspective on civilization, 10,000 mile, however, whatever view you want to take on civilization. Mm -hmm. You're in the middle of all that is of the code and you're watching a code deployment be dropped into civilization. And yes, at first it is like uh, agriculture is going to be absolutely fantastic. Right. Social media is going to be absolutely fantastic, etc. Right. So then you can begin to uh, Eric Weinstein. Interestingly enough, Eric Weinstein, shout out. Angle of declination. Hmm. So you can actually start objectively measuring hmm. how the code deployment is doing in terms of what its initial purpose was to do. Hmm. And then if the angle of declination becomes even lower than than zero, you know, it's acute angle has went downward now right. instead of upward, you know, mis its mission and values are, you know, let's say at an angle of 10, 10 degrees, you know, it's like, great, it's like positive code deployments. And then you get some of these code deployments that angle downward, the angle hmm. declinations went downward, not inclination, but declination, right? And so then the idea is how do you have, and this is what Pia and I were talking about, Eric's right. wife, this is what we were talking about. How do you objectively, in a consensus mechanism, make decisions amongst 8 billion human animals about the angle of declination, right. about the code deployment? How well is the code deployment doing? It's such a tricky question, right? Because 
I think you said the initial angle is the purpose at the beginning. But you know, a lot of a lot of these innovations and stuff like that, their purpose is actually not what they get and you know what they end up getting used for at all. And it's it's a tricky thing because are you are you um, you know looking at it and saying how is this compared to its original purpose? Are you comparing it to its com original purpose, or are you comparing it to the overall good it's had on humanity? And it's hard to say um, those things because I think you know that's dynamically moving. Right. Like, it's like it's yeah, like moving, yeah. and it's yeah. and I think it's hard to say for whom. Too, right? Because something that's been really amazing for you know a couple people in Silicon Valley, which is you know all this explosion of, of wealth and technology, has been very detrimental to people in other parts of the world, right? And actually, probably more people, right? If you think about um, you know where the metal in our laptops are coming from, or where the paper that we're now printing on or able to print on because we're creating so much more media is now getting. We have this huge demand for paper, right? Or this huge demand for microfiber cloths, or this huge demand for all these random things that we didn't care about before. Are, now there's this huge demand for those things, um, right? June in the event was talking about Foxconn, right? These yeah. these factories that are producing the iPhones in our pockets, and where these people are deeply unhappy. Um, and really having a hard time. And so there are some aspects to the code deployment, right? Here's the nuance, right? You have to be able to abstractly reason with dozens, if not hundreds of different variables at the same time. And this is where things get complex because we are too addicted to cognitive ease, we're too addicted to tribalism and echo chambers and filter bubbles, and that becomes a massive problem because then you lose the nuance. You lose right. being able to measure the dozens to hundreds of right. different variables. And so when you, when you have someone saying that Apple is bad or Apple is good, right? right? You're missing. You're missing all of the nuance because they are providing us with these incredible technological right. devices at the same time as causing some ecological issues as well as mental health issues in the right. manufacturing process. And some things we don't even know for hundreds of years to come, right? Like the reason why we're together right now is because I got an email to come to this other event and if I never had a phone or a communication method to get that, you know, maybe we, we wouldn't be that. sitting down yes, here. Yes. And then what would our lives look like? So it's so hard to keep track of all these different timelines going on in these different ways. And I think something you said was interesting because I want to I want to investigate something you said um, when you said, you know, uh, these these code these code changes, these codes code additions. And I think the the way maybe I've been thinking about it is that yes. the universe or or, or the world kind of had like a, a GitHub repo, if you will, that was like kind of static, right? Oh, I'm, human, I'm already <laughs> loving this. Keep going. The, I'm loving like it. the humans before, um, not not even humans. I guess our our, our ancestors before we started, um, you know, showing traits that were like very exceptional. So maybe like Australopithecus and stuff like that. When we're really living off the land, when we're really kind of, as Yuval Harari would call a, like an animal of no uh, significance, right? When we're basically just part of the circle of life, um, living by our own unique methods, but not so aberrant from the norm like we are now. Um, in that period, I think, you know, the code is kind of running the way that it was always running, right? It's running on biological processes, it's running at the speed of biology, it's running at the speed of evolution. And it's kind of when, you know, Homo mm. sapiens started, or I mean, let's go back even a little further, right? It's right, it's right when Erectus um, started using fire, and a little bit further, it's when Homo sapiens started developing language in the cognitive revolution, and then tools that, that mm. those are, I think are the first code editions. Right? Ooh, Ma so and good. I mean, maybe, so maybe, good. maybe you could push back on this. And but because you can also go all the way back to the initial um, uh, birth of life on the on the actual right. Rock. And you could say and, that's a code edition. And you, and you could also go back to Big Bang to that's the starting point right. of code. Yeah. So yeah. maybe maybe then the the idea is not that w humans have invented the code edition, but maybe then the idea is that humans are accelerating the rate at which code is deployed. Mm. Because before, you know, we were talking the speed of biology, the speed of evolution is much slower. The deployment of that code takes, you know, death and life to, to actually either keep a part of the code 
um, or remove yes. it from the code base. We're, right? ma when, we're, we're making the system more entropic then. We're adding entropy to right. the system by adding code. Wouldn't we be? Because yes. us creating like language is, is adding code that's never been there before. Mm, but and it then, adds order and disorder, doesn't it? Both. So then that becomes a hard thing to that's, measure. Okay. Okay, but okay. So you're doing something that's really great right now, which is you're, you know, you're taking us to thinking about the whole thing from the Big Bang until now as as code. And then then you took us to, you know, the first edition of of you know language and fire being code deployments right. and then all the way to social media being code deployment, right? right? Now what we want to do, right, let's get to this, to the, to yeah. the variables, right, to the, to, to the a nuance within it, right? We can pretty much almost completely argue that, <clears throat> that fire is like a vast majority excellent um, code deployment, potentially. For who, right? For, well, For us. Well, okay, could, okay, fine, let's find a different one, right? Sure. Is, well, is language a 100%, uh, not, we can't be 100, right? Everything's on a probability curve. So is language at least, you know, 97% positive on a code deployment, and then maybe only 3% of it needs to be like augmented somehow right. for the neologisms, mm. the new words that... I think for, I think for any of, for assessing the malevolence or benevolence of any of these code deployments, we have to say for who. Uh, I think, I think, I think we can, I agree with you that we can say this was good or bad, but I think we have to say for who. We can't do overall for right. Civ. We because can't do you, that. You, or you can do it for, for the human civilization, but I don't think you can do it for like the universe or for all life. Okay, well, because well, why, if you say fire, because you say fire, it harms it, certain things. Because it makes us the apex predator. Because then we, but it brings we us burnt trees, right? Which is not great for them, for fire, but it's good for not us. Great for and them. language makes it cooked animals. Yeah. Cooked animals, right? Yeah. It makes it easy for us to communicate with each other language, yes. which means we can team up better and beat other animals better. So it's much better for us, but it's at the cost of okay. something else. This is else. fair. This is very fair. So I, I, I would agree with you that looking at it from the human lens. That it's that we can assess the okay yeah I have one. What about the human fully realizing their divine communion with evolution, with all that is? So that would be probably a net positive. Yeah, for for that net positive for everything. There we go. So there's one that's an interesting. That one. that's yeah. Okay. Do you think? Do you think that we had that? Before the advent of agriculture, this, with yeah, animism. Th yeah, this is a very interesting question because you know when you think about things on, on uh, as a knowledge graph, and you think about the the edge of knowledge, um, I do think it's potential that the edge of knowledge for like spiritual connection to the universe and all that is potentially was further out in our past than it is now. Really? That it's contracted potentially the spiritual um, connection to to the universe has has receded has receded. Yeah, I would completely P agree. Potentially, yeah, yeah. It's I would potentially agree. true. Yeah, it's uh, th that might be an unfortunate one. Um, and so, so then you know, one of the things. Okay, fine. We just identified like one of the ones that we think is potentially completely net positive completely for the whole positive. code system. Yeah, is is humans. So that so now this takes us to you know one of the along with thinking of everything as code. And <clears throat> let's think of humans as seeds. Okay. Okay. So a uh, human is birthed into the world. Sure. And the moment that they're birthed into the world, and of course there's also things to say about when they're actually um, um, in, in, in developing inside of the woman gestating, right? Right. But, um, but let's say from the moment of birth as the seed, the seed needs the right nutrients. Yes. And now this becomes the question is, what is the code to deploy to the nutrients as they're birthed into the world? Well, one of the things we can probably say for sure, which we hinted at earlier, mm -hmm. is that it's a net positive for the seed to understand that it is connected to very spiritually to all that is. Absolutely. Okay, so there's that net positive. Another net positive is that it gets love and compassion, probably. From, I think that it's probably a net positive for everything. Is if that, like, could there be ever a positive where the seed... Uh, uh, I, th I think, well, I, th I think... It needs water. I think then... It needs food, <laughs> right? So those are... Yeah, I yeah. think the net positive that we can identify is the connection to everything else because that keeps it within the 
the ecosystem yes. and makes it so that it's respectful of the ecosystem and thus like is a net positive for everything in the ecosystem. I think anything kind of besides that is still valuable for us because we are the humans, but we can't necessarily say is a net positive for the rest of the world. And I, I think that's fine, right? I think it's fine to say, you know, um, having mentorship and having education and having access to technology, whatever, is good for a, a, a human growing up. But I think, you know, making the claim that, well, it's good for the universe as a whole is a harder claim. Yeah, it is a harder claim, but can we at least make air, right? So access to oxygen to breathe, right? To clean air. I, yeah, I mean, if, if that human is providing back into the overall system, if that human is destroying the overall ecosystem, then, then it can't be a net yeah, positive. For correct, it. correct. Um, so, then, so then, okay. Yeah, so this is, the co this is where we're starting to get yeah, more into complexity. So, let's, so then we would have to say like, okay, let's say that the, the, the consumption of the seed um, is, let's say, um, does not cause harm. Like you can't, can you really say that eating, you know, like spinach is causing spinach harm and is a net, you know, negative to the spinach and then, you know, because then, then that throws, okay, we might have to not go into 100%. Yeah. This is where we might or, have to start or, going into 90, 90 10s or, or not 80, go 20s. into the nets. Because I think yes, if we yeah. stay within the human purview, we can we can make progress. But when, okay, when you when you go into the I eat spinach, the, I heard spinach. That yeah, yeah, yeah when you yeah, when yeah, you get yeah. into that stuff, I think, I mean, it's it's an interesting like philosophical debate. Does it have realistic implications for our lives? Less so. Maybe if we really thought about it and really also, got down to it. Also, humans could make way more spinach if we were really. Uh, actualized to our <laughs> fullest and using, and then spinach could have more of its ability right. to to be its conscious spinach self. <laughs> <laughs> like kind of maybe maybe like the, the the final thing we can say about the the net stuff is like for the worm, right? Like we can say it's good for the worm to eat the um, the soil, right? Uh, to eat yeah. the, the the decomposing material yeah, yeah. because then it produces soil that then is makes fertile things for other things. But it's a very complex, uh, sorry, simple system. Right? It's almost an input and an output. You have kind of biomass going in and, and um, fertile biomass coming out. There's, like, there's a good thing happening there. And in that process, you know, the worm has a livelihood and the worm has a life. The, the tricky stuff is, I think, when you get to humans, when we no longer are part of the biological yes, circle. Yes, yes. And so when we eat spinach, you know, our waste doesn't necessarily go fertilize something. It gets like shot out into the ocean. It's not necessarily going back into the ecosystem. So I think it's harder to say for humans also because, you know, mentorship may be incredibly, incredibly powerful for a human. But does it have an impact on a palm tree correct, down, correct. down the street? Probably not, right? Um, and so... Unless it's a paper company or something like that. Right, yeah, in which it could. Oil, yeah, and maybe yeah. that's like a really interesting kind of hole to go down. Yeah. Um, I think if we're going to talk about how to nurture the human seed, how to nurture the, the human yes, animal growing yes. up, it's a somewhat of a different conversation because it, it's yes. more about these... It's the same these, convo. It's, it is. It's, it's an it extension is, but of it's, the, yeah, um, yeah. it's selecting a different area. area. Okay, so let's... Okay, so let's... Um, <clears throat> so now let's, let's take it from seeing all it is as code and seeing a... Um, the angle of you know inclination or declination as something that um, can that's impacting um, the all that is code. Um, let's maybe think about it as how it impacts the 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 civilizations code. So strictly the civilizations. So strictly code. humans. Yeah, and this was what makes it hard because there is no other right. There are these lines are completely arbitrary in right. a sense. And so this is what makes it um, potentially a little difficult. But okay, let's start there. So, okay, even though you have to consume, um, you know, you get, you're getting love, the seed is birth, it's getting love and compassion, it's getting full spiritual connection to, to um, all that is, it's getting um, uh, 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 food, it's getting water. So, you know, so love, compassion, food, water, uh, all that is, um, you know, and then from there, air, right? Air is another one. So these are, these are kind of these basic. This is like Maslow's hierarchy right. of needs, right? Yeah. So, so you can break this yes. stuff down, I think, into multiple 
categories. So what we were talking about in the previous episode um, is some of the stuff I think would make a really great community. And that's taking for granted kind of the stuff that we're just talking about now, which is the basic needs, right? So to, to have a, a person grow or, or to have a fulfilling life, I think the first step is the basic needs, right? And that's something we kind of jumped over um, in the last episode when we went straight to, okay, you have the basic needs met, what's going on yeah, yeah. then? But I think the first step is is to meet the basic needs. Yes. Um, and so many seeds are going without the basic needs met. Exactly. Okay, so this is kind of one of the theses of the code, right? We have civilization's code here in front of us, and we can call it the code of all that is, and now we're honing in on civilization's code. One of the greatest malevolences that is occurring in civilization's code is the lack of nutrients to the yes. seeds. And basic, then, basic need. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, then, and then so that is causing significant trauma, that's causing significant ignorance. Lack of potential, right? Uh, yeah, the potential that is not being actualized. Because we can even see, you know, the human um, has the ability to grow to six feet, right? Always did. We, we didn't change anything. It's the nutrients that we've been having that allows us today to be much taller than our ancestors. It's not because, you know, anything else. It's really that we were you know, you could call us malnourished then, and now we're getting so many more nutrients, so many, um, I mean, there are people who make arguments that we were getting more nutrients when we were hunter-gatherers because we had more diverse diets. I think we probably had better microbiomes and things like that. From like a mass of food we have been able to intake though, um, which is stuff, I think the stuff that affects height more, I think microbiome is more like health, like, um, like gut health, but on like a, for a height level, for like a muscle mass building level, we've been able to just ingest so much more meat than our ancestors have ever been to, you know, able to ingest, and that's why we're so much bigger and stuff like this. And I think that's an analogy for what's happening around the world today, where um, you know you're going to have a guest on, I think tomorrow, right, uh, who was mentioning mm -hmm. how different populations can have different average IQs, which yes. is kind of a risky area to get into. But the reasons people have kind of put together for that is that certain people um, are getting access to different nutrients when they're really young yes. and that can affect brain development Absolutely. and lack of access to nutrients can actually hinder brain development um, in the long term exactly. right so exactly. if those those human seeds if you will aren't getting access to you know the basic basic needs the the food water the correct amount yeah. of stuff like that um, you know you're gonna have these these at the root core, Correct. you're gonna have these big structural problems exactly. in, that, in that person flourishing growing up. That, that's it, that's it. We are right in the thesis of my recent life right yeah. now, right now. This is the most recent thesis of my life, is trying to figure out how to deploy code most effectively with the resources that we have to make sure that the seeds are getting the right nutrients around and the world. And distribute it. Right, because it's not yeah. like we don't have. It's like it's not like we don't know how to do this, right? And it's and it's also not that we don't have enough food. It's also not that we don't have enough water. It's that um, they're being hoarded, right? Um, Fifty percent of the food in the U.S. is wasted, and forty percent of it is in the production phase, right? Mm. Only ten percent of it is like when it's on shelves and stuff like that. I mean, a ton of the stuff is just getting wasted in the production phase. So. It's not, um, and, and Ishmael actually talks, the, the book Ishmael yeah, yeah. actually talks a good amount about this, um, is that you know, all those farms in the middle of the US, those aren't just feeding Americans. Those are feeding the, the, the huge populations in other parts of the globe too. Um, and they're, they're getting no guarantee that those populations are gonna stop producing. So there's new people being born, they need food, right, or, or else they'll mm -hmm. die. So the food is produced um, in like you know more developed parts of the world and then sent over there so then it grows and then the food production has to ramp up so it grows and there's no there's no balancing on it and this is because of the agricultural revolution right before the agricultural revolution the amount of food in the environment bounds the population growth right the number of bison the number of berries on the trees the number of grains available to eat and harvest um, or not harvest but mm -hmm. to gather mm -hmm bounds the population so the population can't get out of hand what happens is that when we started domesticating agriculture mm -hmm. is that we were able to have these huge population explosions yes, yes. which then put more stress on the environment and mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. our um our and cause some of the hiccups in the code when certain seeds didn't get the right nutrients that they 
Exactly. If you were make, if we were making sure that every single seed when they're birthed into the world, when we only had a hundred thousand people on the planet, was getting the right nutrients, and there were no malevolences, that there was no time that the the child from especially from from zero to six months was having trauma, lack of love and compassion, lack of water, lack of food, lack of air, etc. Yeah. We would we would have we would have a much if if that happened at every stage for every seed up until now, um, we would have we would our code would be really strong. Our plane We'd be in a would different be place. so robust as yeah. it would be flying through the air. But yeah. our plane is made of, you know, I, weak materials. Yeah. Because yeah. what, what, so, so the plane metaphor that we're using, just to give background on it, what it, what it basically, the idea behind that is that um, there is a law of life as it were, just like there is a law of thermodynamics or a law of aerodynamics. And so here we're using the law of aerodynamics example. So the idea being that um, when you create a paper airplane, I mean, we could even do it as an example. When you create a paper airplane that doesn't obey the law of aerodynamics, it's not like that airplane explodes in your hand, right? It's not that you throw that airplane and God comes down and swats it. It's that you throw that airplane and it just doesn't fly very far or very well or it crashes or it skews or it does weird stuff. And the, the idea is that you create a paper airplane or a real airplane that is obeying the correct laws of aerodynamics and it actually will fly um, and it will do what it's meant to do. But there, this isn't like a video game you know, where you make a wrong step and it beeps. This is, this is the real, real world. And so you disobey the law of physics, your shuttle explodes. You know, someone doesn't come down and tell you, hey, pal, you messed it up, right? And so the idea behind the book Ishmael is that the moment that we decided to disobey the law of life, which is what he in the book says is when we started the agricultural revolution, when we said we are going to make our own food source, he says that is a disobeying of the law of life, that no other animal does that, and that's why they're able to survive. And Very you, interesting that that is. When you disobey yeah. it and make your own food yeah. supply, then you dominate the ecosystem mm. because you're, you need more food to sustain your population. So you need the food that you need and not the food that you know, the bees need or the food that um, the other animals need. And so you end up dominating the yeah. world and creating a monoculture which ultimately leads to your to your own destruction. Also, it almost seems as though that then that is when it becomes the Anthropocene. That's the moment when humans say that we're taking the we're taking control. We now have the reins, right. um, and then all the way from that until rockets, you know, blasting off. Right. So, so let's let's come to this. Really, I think I think we can probably play on this for. We, we give this really solid illustration of what it'd be like, let's say, if sure. you know, we're at the 100,000 people and every single time that a new seed is born that there's no, uh, n no nutrient loss every single time. That every single time the seed is getting everything it needs to flower at its fullest and sure. brightest. And that's a very beautiful thing for that human to be at their fullest, right? And we see a major lack of that in terms of especially the spiritual right. connection one. That one specifically is a major lack. That's why there's so many, right. so many, a lot of a lot of the issues we have. Now let's talk about the the how to deploy currently, because that is like if you press the reset button, right? Yeah. And pressing the reset button's a great, you know, you were you were you were pointing at this earlier, you know, the show is called Simulation. Well, it's called Simulation for a myriad of reasons. One of them being it's fascinating to think about and run simulations in your mind. What would have Earth looked like if every seed got the water that it needed right. in every mind? So that we can't unfortunately go back to that point until we run our own simulation and watch how it would have evolved because right. on a on a on a flourishing scale, we can totally see that it would have went like this. The the airplane, right? The airplane, how robust would have the airplane been built, the paper airplane, whereas ours is much more yeah. like this over time. And and I just want to yeah. like I want to talk about the actual code deployments in the current, right? Yeah. So this is what you know, eight billion of us human animals, you know, exponential technology and a lack in many ways of that connection to all that is, that right. spiritual communion. That is, that is missing in many ways. So now, 
how do you run a code deployment onto civilization that, you know, we already gave this interesting example earlier that a code deployment of spiritual communion is yeah, potentially positive. net positive for positive. all that is, right? right? Okay, so then potentially it is a good code deployment would be how can you uh, deploy um, code that actualizes people spiritually in a very effective uh, way. Yeah. Because meditation seems to be a very interesting one. Psychedelics seems to be a very right. interesting one. So the so I think the 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 analogy with the with the paper airplane is that you know we're going um, we're going on a path currently that is actually falling. Like we're almost actually hitting the ground. We just don't notice it. And people look at you know the graphs of technological progress and all this stuff and say, oh, we're doing great. But what they don't realize is that that's just the plane flying badly, and it just it just hasn't hit yet. Um, and that we're actually not flying on a, on a direct course. And I think the reason we're not flying on a direct course is, is what you're saying, is the lack of connection to everything. Because I think if we were genuinely connected, we wouldn't be doing a lot of the things that we're doing right now that's making the, the plane fly badly. Because we, if we understood we were part of the circle of life, if we understood that we were one species and that we're one, you know, we're connected to the earth, we wouldn't be doing a lot of the, yes. the things that we think are the right thing to do. Yes, yes, and yes, so what's yes. that, what it's doing, is I think we have two problems in, in right now. You have the people who don't have their basic needs met yet are suffering, right? Um, and then you have the people whose basic needs are met and the system isn't great for them either, right? You have, you know, you and me and the people living in, in our society um, aren't actually doing that well either, right? We were talking about the metrics earlier. We were talking about the, the rates of depression and suicide and anxiety and loneliness. Loneliness is such a, such a real thing um, and it's happening, right? Um, and just the constant overwhelming pressure to climb up the hierarchy yes. of money and of fame and of power and of influence. And comfort and, and, and comfort all these things, right. And become a better mate. Right. Um, it's just a constant Instant barrage, right? Barrage, yeah. And it's and so no one's happy, right? It's not it's not it's not the people who don't have their basic needs met. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, the noble savage thing. No, no, no. Like they're they're ba if your basic needs are met, you're not you're not doing great. And there's no way to romanticize that, right? And I think we shouldn't also romanticize people who do have their basic needs met and yes. say, well, well, why are you sad? You know, it's yes. because it's these other things that play. It's not about the basic needs. So then. that might be the some of the bad code then. Yeah, potentially. So I th and it's the thing that's causing both of these, right? The same thing that's driving these people to chase wealth and status and stuff is the same thing that's making it so that those other people don't have their basic needs met because it's taking all those reasons. These people are saying we need more. Right? We need more, 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 more. And these people are saying, we just need the basic stuff. What happens is then you get this. And that may be this interdependent You're capitalism. taking resources away from the people who don't have their basic needs met and giving extra stuff to the people who have already have their basic needs met. And the problem is, is that those people aren't getting happier with the new things that they're getting. The new things, yeah, and the yeah. people obviously don't have their basic needs met, so they're not happy. So what do you do about it? So what's the code update? Right? What's the code update? I think. We, we started touching on this last time. I think the code update is, um, is this new model of living. And I think it's a model of living that everyone has to be on board with and they can do in their own way. They can wear whatever t-shirt, whatever color, whatever you know, they want to wear. Is this pretty much the, you know, the closest one? Like interdependent capitalism is a pretty It's pretty good, close. It's pretty, I, th I think, yeah. I think, I mean, I think. I think so too for I need a code to you know. Me too. Cover to cover. Cover to, really to cover understood. too. Yeah. But I think it's a, it's talking about. It probably has already said all the stuff that we're saying. We yeah. don't know it. But the new um, the new the new code deployment of inclusive fitness of right. inclusive stakeholding, um, and of yeah. a global village. The, kin the global village extending to the global right. village. So you that uh, you get an incentive for helping. Um, others. others. Yeah. yeah. Because you realize that the things that are going to make your life great aren't actually those resources that you're taking from other people. You realize that the thing that's actually going to make you happy and going to make those people happy is having your basic needs met, number one. And then number two, having autonomy, having purpose, having mastery, 
having um, a sense of belonging, and having gratitude. And that is what gives meaning to your life after you have your basic needs met. And we can have everyone in the world have that because that doesn't require a huge um, you know, inequality of resource distribution, right? Resources can be basically basic needs. I mean, in some places people are gonna get you know, probably a little bit more and some people, people are gonna get a little bit less. But hopefully, if we can, hit the basic needs and then try to give people the autonomy, the, the purpose, the mastery. And, and how we do that is through these communities, I think. Okay, all right. Let's, of 150. Let, yeah, you're, in what you described in the, in the previous episode that is your current code deployment that you're deploying yourself. Um, let's, let's, let's explore the, the idea of what 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 is it is it a is it a is it a, you know we, we 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 do think of of options i mean i listed these options when we were all gathering this last weekend but there are so many options some people say that for the for the resources to be allocated for the basic needs to be met of the vast majority and then in order for that to then I kind of I think I found like a pretty easy way to explain it. it's just that like this is the top of the resource consumption and ownership and assets that all that wealth etc mm -hmm. and this is the bottom right right the idea is just to bring the baseline up like this right and and like focus on that right and then they both move up together versus you know which in many ways what it seems like is this is just rising up and right. this is like going up up uh, and it's like great, it's right. coming up, y yeah, and that, yeah, and that's not actualizing people as. Quickly. And I think what we actually need is even instead of instead of just even the bottom catching up to where we're at, which is what's happening slowly now. If you look at China, if you look at India, they're trying to industrialize. They're trying to do the things that we did. We actually don't need to be this high. I think that's the point here is that we have too much right now. <laughs> Um, bless you. Thank you. That we actually have a lot that we don't need right now. And so, so there's actually a really destructive mo thing that's happening in the world right now, which is other countries trying to emulate um, mm. the American model, which is huge overconsumption, right? Don't we use 25% of the world's resources? We do, and we have 5% of the population. And we have 5% of the population. If every country did that, I mean, you don't need to be yeah, yeah. like Stephen Hawking to figure out yeah. that that's an equation that doesn't work. I think... What do you do here at the top then to say that, oh, well, you know, you don't, you know, how do you get the you don't need five yachts, five cars, five houses, six gold watches, right. etc. How do you get that? How do you solve that? That, that seems like a, a very challenging yeah, one. It's, to, it seems challenging. Yeah. Do you, um, I forget the name, I always forget the name of the what? concept, but I know what the concept is. The idea um, of the, the bell curve of how ideas and how technologies get propagated into society. So there are, there are the- um, Mimetics and the, the, the early Adopters. The early adopters, yeah. you know, you have oh, the, um, the the early majority, the late majority, the laggards, and it's basically a really small percentage of people at the edge who are coming up with the new technologies, the new innovations, and then those are kind of adopted by the rest of the curve over time. Yes. And so what I think you need to do is you need to prove in an edge case, you need to prove that yes, you actually don't need all that stuff to live a fulfilling life. Because I don't think anyone's proven it relevantly and proven it um, in a way that resonates with people yet. In the 70s, they tried to prove it, right? They tried to say you don't need this stuff, but I think it was too out there, it was too isolated, um, it was too counterculture mm -hmm. that the every man, you know, the, the, the middle of the people, I wish I had a graphic of it, but the, the majority of people are in the middle of the bell curve. They're not, you know, willing to commit Pe People entirely. still want to experiment in Oh, if I get the second house, then I'll be happy. If I get the second car, then I'll be happy. Exactly. But now it seems you more proven. It. Now it seems more objectively true to people that no, 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 that won't make me happy. In that, right. So then the code deployment seems to potentially work with higher efficacy now. But then you need, like you were pointing at, the early adopters on this yeah. side to pick up on that code deployment. Right. Teach other people that About hey, it. you know, we have the giving pledge right now at least. You know, that's happening. Yeah. 
that, you know, that it needs to become popular to say that, hey, I have, you know, $40,000 and instead of buying a Tesla, right. I'm going to give a thousand dollars to 40 different artists and entrepreneurs right and that needs to become popular yeah and and you look at the phone you know a lot of the phone comes out a lot of people say oh I don't need a phone I have my Blackberry or whatever and then everyone suddenly you know after a couple of years that the tipping point kind of happens I think it's between like 13 and 18 percent of market penetration and then you get the the early majority which is the front half of the bell curve the front half of the majority of the bell curve that tips and then adopts the new thing and so what I think we need to do is literally you and me, the, the, the Pantheon, the community we're building, needs to prove this new model. Needs to say, hey, you can actually have a good life living in a community um, without all this extra stuff and have it be actually real to people. Show them that we're actually yeah, living yeah. a good life and we're not you know, running around in the forest in loincloths. We're living legitimate, proper lives that you, know, you could actually have and you could still be working jobs and still be contributing to, to the economy or contributing in ways that you find meaningful, um, but you actually don't need all that other stuff because you're satisfied in these other ways. I think once we prove that, once we as the early adopt, as the very, the mm -hmm. edge case, Basically. prove it, yeah. and it slowly starts to propagate, and yeah. you know, more normal okay, so people can, can imagine leaving college wow. and joining a community it's of so 150 people. It's so funny that our full circle is that the code deployment that we are seeking is the Pantheon. Yeah. That's what I think. I mean, of course I'm biased because, because I think a lot about it. But I think, you know, um, that is the way, is that you, you prove it in an edge case, just like how, you know, a couple people got the first iPhone, I'm like, hey, this is really useful. And then more and more people got it, and they got to a point where everyone's like, yeah, if I could have one, I want to have one. And so that's one of the, the majority tips. And so I think there's going to be a point for a couple years, you know, maybe 10, 20 years, where people are, are hearing about it. You know, it's something in the zeitgeist, just like the iPhone was in the zeitgeist. It's like, oh, people are living in these co-living communities. People are living, um, you know, in these smaller cellular communities and having these great experiences. And you're seeing this, there's some, I think there's one called The Collective in London that's making these communal houses. Like they're actually buying the real estate and like people are moving into them. Um, but it has, they don't have the full community integration that we're going for. But the idea is that this is, it's brimming, right? But it's still kind of an edge case. And so I think when it gets to the idea that when you're leaving college, the idea that you would live in a little apartment on your own becomes weird, becomes the lagging thing. Mm. And the idea that you move into a community, um, an intergenerational, lively, vibrant community right out of college um, or during college, right? Which you have, which you have kind of in the dorms. So probably after college um, becomes much more viable. And then a lot of people are going to be start adopting that or way of life. Or it becomes college. Or yeah, 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 yeah it exactly. becomes school. You live there before you, you go to college. You, 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 know, you live there for to school one. too. That it's that kind of a place where right. you're getting a very valuable. And education. it's slow. It's very incremental. It's very slow. I it think is. Yeah, yeah. Of course. The hippie thing was a revolution, right? It's. I think a lot of people draw parallels between this idea and, and the 70s, and they say, oh, so you're gonna you know, run off into the woods and make a commune? That's not what we're doing, right? I think that's too drastic. All right, I'm gonna counter you. Yeah, please, All right, my please, counter please. is that one of the best code deployments is potentially the Pantheon, right? We have to, we have to actually do this um, at, at, these, at, these, at scale and, and deploy and see right. what, what, what is actually occurring from this. It sounds, fantastic and I think um, uh, in many ways it is kind of like what we have here in the studio or what we have in these apartment yeah. complexes already but just obviously on Mother Earth instead with sunlight instead with uh, completely closed loop feedback yep. ecosystems yep. and um, and one-on-one -on -one mentorship yep. with teaching children giving yep. them nutrients I mean it's so okay so that's Great, let's deploy that, let's test sure. that. Counter, I think, is, I think it may be easier to deploy a meme of some sort that is very profound in shifting one's perspective to a communion with all that is I, I, I have a strong feeling that 
what I'm currently synthesizing, all these jigsaw pieces, all that is is code, the seeds need the nutrients, 100 billion people built civilization before us. There's the edge of knowledge, keep pushing out past the edge of knowledge, bring it down in relatable ways to the seeds that are being birthed. You only get 30,000 days to live. A third of them you're gonna spend sleeping, so spend your 20,000 days actualizing yourself at your fullest, right? I have so many of these jigsaw pieces now that I'm trying to synthesize and work with other brilliant minds to play this tennis game with, to make this puzzle stronger and deploy this code. And I think that a meme deployed from that puzzle as a, can be a single image. And I can give you an example of a single image that I think is a good one. I think that if you take a image of what looks like indigenous people kind of hanging out in like a little rainforest area and they're, you know, maybe have a fire and have some of the instruments that they're playing with. And then right next to the indigenous people, you have a white person from the United States and an Asian person, let's say from China. And they're both sitting there on their laptops coding. And they're like, will you keep it down, please? We're trying to code AGI, you know, or something like that, right? That's in this little image, right? So. I think that with maybe an image like that or with 30 second uh, m video about this puzzle or, uh, or 60 second video about this puzzle or a 20 minute short film or a 60 minute longer film or TV series, however you wanna do it, right? I think that with memes, you can get people to break out of their habits of using the old code that is, that is bad um, and causing malevolence and potentially getting them to understand this big history perspective, get them to understand the communion with all that is, get them to understand that they want to be a part of this conversation with civilization about what new code to run that will uh, maximize the human experiment. So I think, I think that's, that's such a, such an interesting point. And I think the, the thing I'll add on to that or, or like kind of the, the way I'll push yes. back against that yes. is lifespan. And what I mean by that is if you imagine the code as a water source, like a huge rushing river, the code that is very solidified in there, you can imagine as ice, right? It's stuck in there. And there's, there's stuff that's going by all the time. But the ice is the stuff that's, that's really being run on a daily basis. So what I mean is the, the ice is the built environment, right? We were talking in the last episode about how the built environment is very static. Technology is incredibly fast. Media is part of technology, right? The, this video is part of the media of technology. It's, it's going very fast. This video, you know, we're creating it on the fly and people can see thousands of these videos, you know, a day. And then culture is in the middle and culture is where we live, right? So I think the problem is, is that by playing on the time scale, like a meme is on the time scale of technology. A meme is incredibly fast, right? You can see that image that you just talked about in two seconds during your day. And maybe it has a profound impact on you on that day. And maybe seeing 20 of them has a profound impact on you. And maybe seeing 2,000 of them um, has an incredibly profound impact on you and you actually start changing your behaviors, right? But I think the fundamental problem with that is, is that its lifespan is too short. And what I mean by that is, we're hit by so much information at every time that a meme can get lost in the noise. What cannot get lost in the noise is this. This is real, right? I can close my eyes, it's still there. A meme isn't there when I close my eyes, right? When I walk into a room, the way the environment is built shapes my behavior subconsciously. I can't even Absolutely. fight it, right? A meme, I cannot look at it. Check out that wall, episode with, uh, with Evan Bliss that we just published on Ethos of Architecture. He yeah. speaks on that exactly. Exactly, right? And so I think if your solution is through technology, it will, it will be lost in the noise. And maybe some people will get, mm. or not that's completely good, lost in the noise. But that's good, I, like, I like this point. This is a very, very good right? point. So then how do you shape the memetics to physically. not get lost in the noise? Physically. Ha oh, and that's what the Pantheon is, is it's the, it's the physical, physical memetics. And that way, it the, doesn't move. It doesn't move, and that way you're in it every single day. You're in a community. What are the five again? Let me. <laughs> da, 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 da. What are the five? Autonomy. 
Gratitude's the last yes, one. Yes, it is, yes. Mentorship's not in there. It's, it's, it's one of the words. It's, it's not one of the words. It's in the system that, like, the, yeah. these are the fundamental things, and then mentorship is how you implement it. But um, Okay, okay. Um, community? Belonging. Belonging. Yeah, belonging. Belonging. Belonging is at the end, right before yeah. gratitude. Belonging yeah. and gratitude, autonomy. Um, what was it, like values or? Mm, nope. No mass. Ma- mass. Mastery. Oh, mastery. That's mastery. such a crucial one. And, yeah. uh, and purpose. And purpose. So autonomy, Duh. purpose, mastery. Autonomy's pur- um, What's the acronym? Is there an acronym? It's, it's AMP BG. It's a pretty terrible. That's fine. <laughs> AMP pretty... BG helps. It's watch. Pre- yeah. Watch. AMP. BG, yeah. AMP BG. AMPG. Okay, it's AMP, a little out of order. Watch, yeah. AMP BG. Okay, autonomy, mastery, purpose, uh, belonging, gratitude. Yeah, AMPG. AMP BG helps, but I also just heard it recently from you. Yeah. But still, I, if now that I have an acronym for it, I promise I'll be able to recall it in a couple <laughs> yeah, minutes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Because that's very important. Now, the reason why you bring up a physical space being so crucial. Yeah, you, you, you're immersed in that every single day. Uh, can, so, can, can yeah. I, I want to I also do another pushback because I, I, don't, I don't know if maybe, maybe memes, autonom- autonomy, mastery, uh, purpose, so, uh, 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 gratitude, and, and, um, and belonging. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and <laughs> I, think, I think that mastery um, within a context of meditation or of psychedelics or of some sort of a incorporation of a meme like what if it's an ongoing tv series that becomes part of culture that it becomes the ice you know so so he, so here's okay. so here's the okay. idea okay. is that uh, <laughs> we're coming we're coming oh, full circle oh, yeah oh. is that i think we we got into this stuff um through the memes and what I mean by that, and I think it's, it's important to clarify, when we're saying memes, we don't mean Pepe the Frog, we don't mean, um, you know... Uh, Memetics, the cultural mem- dissemination yes, of information. of information. Yes. Yeah, the, 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 what the word meme meant before 20, 20, 2010, right? The original meme. The, so I think we got interested in what we're interested in through books, which are memes, right? Through, through mm-hmm. maybe television series, maybe through other talks we've heard online, TED Talks, TED Talks are memes, right? Through listening to the smartest people in the world deliver messages. Right. Yes. And those, just like what Ron was saying in the last episode, he said, like, you know, he said to us, he said, hey, keep dreaming, kid, but that's not the way the world works. And that's because the physical nature of the world is not in line with this stuff. And so that's the problem that we're having, is we're talking about all these fancy ideas Very in the intellectual sphere, yeah. but it's not being implemented in stone, right? It's not being implemented in the this environment speaks, in which we live. This speaks a lot also, interestingly enough, to your, I think, to your Iranian, your Persian roots, I think. I think, and I think it potentially helps me better understand with some of the Armenian roots that I have as well, Absolutely. that I get what you're saying more, because that you came here with your mom and dad's parents. So that's another interesting thing is that there was no like, you know, it's just, you know, we're moving to the US. It's like, no, we're bringing, you know, and bring sometimes the whole squad, people yeah. don't sometimes have the, you know, the ability to do right. so. But this is such an interesting point is that rooting, <clears throat> rooting a new physical system is, it's almost like potentially a, uh, s- somehow stronger ice. Maybe it's yeah. like permafrost. Right. Is what you're trying to do with physical. Yeah. And digital might only be the the, 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 the thin, thin stuff that can get broken when uh, when something really fast if comes at it. If something else comes at it. So yeah, okay. and and this is so I'm I'm gonna yes. do a couple different yes. zooms. But okay. but but so what you were saying initially, um, you know, with the code as being. Uh, the sun as a certain distance from the earth and the human heartbeat beats a certain amount in a day. That is maybe the most intense permafrost, if you think about it. Oh, that's good. Because it's really, really hard to change those things. It's really, really hard to chuck the earth out of orbit or something like that yeah, in, in, yeah. in comparison to the sun. So I think that's actually code that 
that's gonna run every time, especially because it's physical, it's biological, it's chemical, right? It's happening at a chemical level, at a biological level, that's why your heart's beating the way it does. The way that society is running is at the most free and lucid level of the code. That stuff's getting deleted and changed all the time. Today's code. Today's what, code is of, being yeah. chucked around. We're talking yeah. about how... Like you know, a message being sent from one person to another person is... Is, is code. Is the newest, absolute newest code. And some of the oldest code is that our heart beats 100,000 right. times or that the um, sun is 93 million yeah. miles. And away. so yeah. I can say to you right now, um, you know, uh, that plant is pink. It's not. Right, like because I say it doesn't make it true. If I took a spray can and changed um, and and spray painted that thing, that would be a more uh, solid and and rigid and immovable aspect I just added to the code base. That would be closer to ice because you would actually have to wipe it off or something to change it back. But me saying so, this truth is that's purple. Is potentially closer to uh, a permafrost is truth. Yeah, potentially. yeah, like falsifiable truth is closer to permafrost because if I say, yo, this is pink, yeah, you're yeah. like, clearly it's not. Yeah, yeah. But you imagined it for a second to be yeah, pink. Yeah, yeah. So it existed for a second in the code base and now it's gone. Yeah, yeah. If I painted it pink, it would really be pink. Until you cut it off or scraped it off. Or exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the idea is that the built environment um, is the stuff that stays. And the built environment is what influences the culture. Correct. Um, at a huge, at a huge level. level yeah. And so the problem isn't that technology is going off on this curve. It's that technology is going off on this curve and that the built environment is staying the same and it's breaking culture in the middle. What we need to do is yeah. update the built environment so that it's so that it, um, so that the culture exists in it better, and we also need to rein back some of the technological stuff because it's it's going too far in that direction anyway. That this, the permafrost, uh, you know, can't. It can be updated and then it'll break again when technology keeps going, and it'll be updated and breaking when technology keeps going. What we need to do is we need to create a dynamic system, a, a, a closed loop, in which. Technology is going at the same speed as the built environment is going at the same speed as culture and and then it can actually sustain because if you look at like the earth right the earth is a closed is a closed loop culture you know, needs to be advancing as quickly as the built environment needs to be yes. advancing as quickly as the digital technological environment and actually I would say not as quickly as the technological stuff I think it needs to speed up a little bit but I think technology needs to slow down a lot I think technology also needs to slow down a bit I think that we've done several conversations on the channel about we're not ready for transhumanism we're not we haven't ethically we'll never evolved be. We'll never be. I think we'll never, be. and we're trapped in the biological permafrost, right? We're trapped in these bodies, and I think that makes it so that we'll always have irrationality. We'll always have a little bit of tribalism. We'll always have a little bit there of. There are these. potentially ways around that, though. There are potentially ways around that. There's, there's all different types of simulations, virtual realities, brain computer interfaces, digitizing consciousnesses. There's so many, which are quite far away, I would say, for some of those things, but it's still a interesting thought experiment that can get you to transhumanism, but we are not ready okay, for that. Okay. <laughs> but you brought up a very, very interesting point, which is that the built environment needs to pick pick itself up, which is through things like the Pantheon, through things like... Right, um, and dynamically yeah. rearrangeable environments, I think, are super important. And slow um, down, potentially, And on slowing the down tech. the technological stuff. And thinking. Stuff. It's not like saying, like, don't keep bringing down the genetic sequencing right, right, right. on Carlson Curve. It's don't not keep saying bringing that. It down. It's not saying that. It's saying, you know, keep bringing that down, but really have a geopolitical consensus yes. around the fact that you're now going to have synthetic biology tools in the hands of the most malevolent actors. Right. Yeah. It's not, it's not saying stop m making vaccines. It's not saying stop doing scientific research. It's saying stop making dog food delivery services. Right? It's saying stop doing the crap we don't need. Because when you have the built environment and culture being in harmony, when you have the right values in society, then the technology can now be in service of that. Now technology can enter the, the arena, because what we're happening right now, as I said in the last episode, and I, I think a lot of this only makes sense if you watched the last episode, but that technology is framing the rest of the stuff, and that's bad. 
we're basing our culture and we're basing our built environment. We're not basing our built environment. We're basing our culture based on technology, but they're not in harmony. What needs yeah. to happen is, is technology needs to be reacting to the needs of the culture. It needs to be reacting to the needs of the built environment, not going off on its own route for the sake of money. Yeah. For the sake of money and for the sake of power and for the sake of these things, which is what it's doing right now. It needs to come back to be in service of the human, to be in service of the goals that we have established. So instead of being in the service of money, which it's doing right now, there are a lot of services out there that don't really do anything for anyone but make someone stupid rich, right? There's stuff that's in service of, of increasing people's comfort unnecessarily, and there's stuff that's in, in, in um, that increases people's status, right? People make a shitty startup so they can get clout, right? What is that? The technology shouldn't be used to boost people in a way that doesn't even fulfill them, right? Technology should be in service of the people. And it's in service of the people if it's increasing our autonomy, if it's increasing our, our purpose and, and those things, and if it's helping our basic needs. The vax, so the AMP BG sits on top of basic needs, right? So if the technology is helping us get more autonomy, purpose, mastery, gratitude, all that stuff, fantastic. And if it's servicing our basic needs, which is health um, and those things, access to clean water, that is the technology we need to be exactly. focusing yes, on, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so it's okay. not saying, yeah, that's so good. when we're slowing down technology, what we mean by that is not stopping the research labs, right? It's making more research labs to focus on those things. It's putting basic more people on the basic needs and, and less on people amp. on like, yeah. you know, um, like, EP. V betting on who's going to win the next sports game or something. I mean, like none of that stuff actually helps us, right? The stuff that really helps us is, is fulfilling our basic needs and fulfilling those other things. Um, Autonomy, mastery, purpose, purpose belonging, belonging, gratitude. gratitude. Yeah. Um, and so, so the idea is that we need to be working at all these scales. So you were saying the memes, right? You were saying, what if I'm, w this show, right? W where does this show fit in? to the process, and, and, and here's where I think it does. I think David Eagleman, um, great mentor of mine, was on the show. Yeah, shout, shout out, out David Eagleman, shout out David. much, much love. We love you. Um, incredible, incredible, incredible guy. Yeah. Uh, talks about in his talk at the Aspen in Institute and in his book, The Runaway Species, mm -hmm. he talks about creativity yeah. and how there are ideas that, that are doing slight changes to the status quo and there are ideas that are trying to completely reform the entire status That's quo. That's right. right? And that, a successful person has multiple ideas that are working at these different scales yes. and usually in service of each other. So the things happening at the small scale is actually in service of the larger goals. Yes. And that's the idea behind the Pantheon is we have three horizons. Horizon one being projects that we can do today. We can literally do today that, that move the needle a little bit and that generate resources for us to do stuff tomorrow. Horizon two is takes a little bit more work, a little bit more effort, moving the needle a lot more, um, but is, is harder to do and requires more research. And horizon three stuff, which is like society scale, super hard to do, changing like built environment infrastructure yeah. stuff. And so I think we need to have things at all these different time scales. I think this show and the memes, as you're talking about them, are in the horizon one time scale, which is that we're, do, we're doing them today. We're having this conversation today. Yeah. We're getting these ideas out there today. Um, and horizon two time scales building the built environment. Yeah, and horizon three time, like time, or I guess the full like whole world in the built environment would be like a horizon three thing. Sure, sure. Us doing our own little community is like somewhere between horizon one and two. Cool. It's like it okay. takes effort and it takes research and it takes trying out to do, but we can kind of do it today. Um, but the idea is that that alone doesn't tip the needle super hard. It's when we create, a, when we really test that in Horizon 2 and we really get a great model of it, that we can export it to being a Horizon 3 thing where everyone can now get on board. I mean, you're trying to move these ideas, ideas from Horizon 3 closer to Horizon 1 all the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Another way to think about that is that you, we're constantly evolving the ethics of the species and yeah. we're trying to push push us closer, closer to, to that. progress yeah. and that you want to move the overton window right. of acceptable ideas wide open on that side yeah. and close it off on this yeah. side um, from malevolent code and exactly. to benevolent code and the benevolent code requires the memes in this sort of phase exactly. one it requires the built physical environment to really start to move to us to really start to yeah. move in that direction and then once we get you know you could, you know, we're trying to move the needle to, to get to this new AMP BG basic needs met world, right? This, this world 
um, like in the Pandaya model, but then when that has kind of become the norm, when that's easy to do, when that's accepted, when that's in Horizon 1, you know, we're, we're going to realize there's problems that we couldn't even think about until that was solved, right? And now there are going to be new problems in Horizon 3, and we're going to start needing to, to normalize those in Horizon 1 through talking about them, right? Intellectualizing about them. We're going to need to start getting them into the culture, because because that's, that's what this, this talk is doing right now. We're talking about these things that are at a very high level. Over time, these things oh, will become part of the culture. Oh, your boy's about to continue disseminating them to everybody exactly. else that he talks to, exactly. and then they'll keep talking to other people they'll keep about, talking about them. It. It'll become part of the overall culture. culture. The ideas will the get into movies. Physical. They'll get into TV shows. They'll get into the normal things, and then those things will start um, to get reinforced by the, the physical stuff we start to do. Ha, and then it so it does nice. start with the memes. <laughs> it does. You, you have, <laughs> it does. It does. Right? You have yeah, to have yeah, stuff yeah, at every yeah. scale. Stuff at every scale. At That's every a scale. part of the creative genius. So this is, yeah. the, this is as much yeah. a part of the, the process as is building the physical environment. We need to get you on to talk about the actual code of the pantheons. I loved it. I loved it. You know. it yeah, I loved it. F fuck it. We can talk about that. Let's right? do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Tell us about this, because you know we're now we're propagating this idea of we want the memes to spread about about you know about spiritual actualization and about getting every seed the right nutrients and again and about about just about updating code, Civ's code to be better and having these profound awakening things. But we also simultaneously want to be rooted in these physical environments that foster autonomy, mastery, purpose, purpose. belonging, gratitude. So And have the basic needs met. And all of the basic needs met. So now how does the design and we need visuals for this, but we'll go. I wish with, I had a whiteboard. Or we'll something. go. We'll go without visuals. I mean, okay. we, do, we do have a whiteboard, but um, we'll. You know, I could get behind the robots and do some stuff, but <laughs> we'll. We'll 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 have more um, visuals for this um, another yeah. time soon. Yeah, yeah. Om and I are going to try to make I love visuals it. for this. Yeah. I love it. You guys from, can from both, our presentation background. We're going to try. I, to. Exactly. You and Om can both come on with visuals, and we can. Really, dive yeah, deep I'd love into to. It. I'd really give us the abstract right okay. now. Okay, yeah. so the abstract idea right now, um, which has been existing in my head when I'm saying this stuff, so it may seem like I'm overselling this idea that I only briefly mentioned, but it's it's in there. So, so the idea here is that um, the the basic building block of it, um, the most fundamental permafrost, you will of it, is the actual physical community. So you have a complex of buildings, it can be one building. The idea is that it can be modular and it can be adaptive. So if you're in a, if you're in a conservative Muslim community and they need separation between different chambers of the house, you can, you can have that evident in the architecture. If you're uh, in a community where you know, they don't want it to be super co-ed or whatever, you can change the architecture of the house to look like that, the architecture of the, the community of 150 people. If you want it to be a super you know, open, inclusive. Oh, I already whatever. have questions. What happens when someone wants a bigger room than someone else? That, that's, that's stuff that gets worked out within the 150 of the communities. The idea is that we don't put legislature on top of that because in so if you want a bigger place, you can either talk to the other people about getting parts of their spaces, or you can try and move to a different 150 community where you can where have more space. Where people have more space, yeah. The, the idea is or that... Or where people have more space in general. In oh. general, or they, they're willing to give more space because okay. they don't care. The, the okay, so this is very libertarian. It's pretty libertarian. With, um, with the code... Um, that is law in the, each of the 150 pockets. Yeah, so the reason why we don't have like top-down legislature is because it's actually really easy to work out. Um, you, you actually don't need a police force in a group of 150 people. Um, the, the interpersonal connections between those 150 people actually serve as enough as a social glue. And if you're living with those people, you don't want to piss those people off. So you don't like 
do stupid things around them. Like I'm thinking about my dorm at college. I'm not gonna go into someone else's room that I know, that I see every day, even though their door's unlocked. I'm not gonna go in and take their stuff when I easily could because I'm gonna be living next to that person for the rest of the thing. It's not even a thought that crosses my mind. Yeah. But you're at summer camp with someone for a week. You're never see, gonna see this person again. How many kids you know, steal something? Probably a lot more than yeah. in college, right? Where you have this strong interpersonal connection. So the idea yeah. is that in groups of 150 people, interpersonal conflicts Self-care. can get res- resolved without the without needing a third party um, mediator Arbitrary, right. which means that actually both parties are happier because they came to the conclusion themselves as opposed to some judge saying yes or no and then them having to kind of deal with the ramifications and it's usually kind of skewed one way so interesting so that's they get self regulate their governance and we're actually good at this like We've forgotten this in the past 200 years when we've been living in our nuclear families and living in isolation, but humans have been living in communities of 150 people since Homo erectus. Like we've been doing this forever, for 200,000 years. Homo erectus was around for three million years. We know how to do this. The reason why we can read each other's facial expressions, the reason why we have all these weirdly expressive things about us. it took millions of years to do it. and, and, And we're relying on the the fundamentals yeah, yeah. To, to structure our Those society. Those are real eyebrows and eyes and... Right, yeah, as yeah. opposed to legal codes, which don't actually exist, which, which are yeah. stuff that people made up, as opposed yeah. to the interpersonal yeah. stuff that really exists. Yeah. I mean, right here, we're relying on that to be, to be our code, right? And that's a stronger, more permafrost code than, than the, than the like, ice water that's flapping Interesting. around so in the legal system. I, I actually did not think that you were going to tell us that 150 people have a strong ability to do. self-regulate, self-govern. They do. That's a very cool start. Okay. Um, so, yeah. so the idea- I still, I'm still very confused about kind of like okay. how people um, will jump into like these different, like I want more space, I want less space. Well, I want to, I want to nudity to be okay. You know, yeah. it's like there's all these if, different if you Ways. look at Burning Man camps, yeah. it's a very it's a very similar thing, and those actually run really well. And I think Burning Man has a lot of which you has, went to for your first time. I did. I, I went yeah. last year, and I'll be going again. Um, hopefully, with some people who are working for nineteen on the camp straight project. years, like June Yoon. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I'm only nineteen. Um, the okay, so so that's kind of going into the weeds of it a bit, which we have thought about. So I can go into the weeds if we need to go into the weeds. Yeah. Point being, okay, the smallest unit of measurement in this society is the hundred fifty people. The, the point I was making with that you can organize it different ways is that the physical environment of that may not always be one house. You know, for some people it'll be one house. For some people it'll be a collection of houses around a nucleus, right? For, it's gonna look different, but it's always gonna be maximum 150 people. Some of them will be less, some of them will be a little more. Hopefully the average is 150. That's the basic building block of the society, okay? Is this, if this group of 150 So literally people, the Dunbar number is like the first yes code line of code of because the- because it's permafrost because it's just like it's just like you know how your heart beats a hundred thousand yeah, yeah. times a day a hundred thousand times a day yeah, yeah. and just like the sun is a certain distance from the earth million miles, 93 yeah. million miles yeah. those just, are my those are my numbers yeah those are your numbers my yeah. numbers and and, and, amp, and your number amp is 150 B, people and pg yeah. yeah the 150 people is I think as true yeah, the Dunbar, as those things. The Dunbar the number numbers is as had, true yeah. as you know the number of, of electrons around a certain atom. It's a fundamental axiom of the human mind that we have a hundred space for a hundred fifty people, uh, give or take you know fifty basically. Um, Three sixty five point two five is another interesting one. Three hundred six uh, for the days in the year. Yeah, around orbit the star. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so it's the same. It's the same thing. So that's our that's our smallest unit of measurement is one hundred fifty people. One hundred fifty. And then you have those. You can call those atoms. Those atoms are surrounded by other atoms that make up their local molecule. Yeah, those yeah. local molecules are surrounded by other local molecules that make up their local cell. Those cells then co. Coalesce. I always yeah, use the coalesce, word coalesce. Yeah, yeah. I always mess up the word with collate. Coalesce um, to make the organism, the organism yeah. which is our overall society. Yeah. And that's what's great about it is that can be cross planetary, right? You can have atoms on the moon and atoms on the earth that are part of the same organism. They're not part of the same molecule, but they're part of the same organism. And they can be running similar code, 
right, that's adapted for their unique environments. Because on the moon, maybe you need a couple different things going on in the structure of the atoms and stuff like that. You need to, you know, have things you don't have on Earth, like, evac you know, like um, oxygen chambers and stuff like that, which change the way the structure looks. But it's the same fundamental framework, just like if you were to take humans today. This reminds me a lot of the Venus project in terms of just appearance at least. Yeah. Very green, very technological. Yes. yes. Um, that that very sustainable, um, very interconnected. Yeah. And that, that that's a little bit of like a visual vision that right. is, is feeling. With um, us. And so the idea being that just like if we went to the moon today, people would think of, you know, and or colonizing Mars or whatever, people would think of building houses like the suburbs we have today. That's the code that we're running that isn't working, right? Yeah, because the only two really options are metropolises, which is or right. suburban and, houses. And we're saying, no, it's, we're doing organ They're both organic. They're ridiculous. They don't work at all. They don't, they don't, no, they don't. You're either isolating people or crowding people and making them anonymous. Both of them are terrible ideas. Yeah. This is the correct model, I think, which is based on the Dunbar number, which is yeah. an axiom, right? But then you do go hang out. I mean, you could spend all of your time going to another cell. Yes, yes. If you go to another cell that has their own 150 Dunbar number, a, what if you stay over at someone's house there you all can, the time? You, you can. can. Like I, I mean, my dorm. But then, don't on you need to do some sort of a like responsibility in your cell? Like well, you, you need do. To go you and do. do. And then, if you don't do, what if you don't, you know, do the responsibility that you're supposed to do in the cell? No cop's gonna come after you. Your aunt is gonna come after you. Your mentor is gonna come after you and say, "Where were you?" You know, it's people you know. Oh, so that's the Dunbar number thing. Exactly. Is that you're not gonna. Because in the stranger uh, you don't give a, realm, you don't give a you don't fuck. Give a, you'll leave, yeah. You'll leave. In my dorm even, which is kind of strangers, because we know we're only going to be there a year, you know, sometimes people leave a little bit of stuff out in the kitchenette, but they get railed for it still, right? Like, people will text in the group me, you know, I know you didn't clean up after yourself in the kitchen, and they'll go back and do it, because they're living side to side with the person that just called them out, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If you're living in an anonymous community, you don't give a crap, crap if you... Yeah, yeah put litter on the floor. That's why people are okay with littering in cities because they don't feel like the city is their community. That's why they're okay tagging the walls because they don't, they don't care, right? Because no one's gonna come after them. The person that's gonna come after them is the cops. They don't care what the cop thinks, right? You care what your mom thinks. You yeah. care what your aunt thinks. You care what the lady Mentor. who raised you yeah, thinks, yeah, who isn't your mom. You care what your, like, you know, your essentially your non-biological cousin thinks, yeah. right? When you knock something over on your living room floor and that everyone shares and you don't clean it, yeah. you're gonna get wrecked by your immediate community of 150 people. So the idea is that you're relying on the systems that work, which are interpersonal connection, as opposed to the systems that don't work, which are authoritative and impersonal anonymous enforcement that doesn't work yeah, yeah, yeah. what does work is your mom's always going to love you the, the woman that raised you or the man that raised you or whoever raised you is always going to love you even if they're not your parents and even if you do some stupid thing like you know cut up a decoration on the wall or spill something you know they're not going to go put you in jail they're going to foster you and nurture you, which is how we know, which is the way to rehabilitate people. And you don't need a trained psychiatrist, you don't need a trained psychologist of how to rehabilitate convict or how to rehabilitate these people. The, you do it naturally as a human being because that's how we're built, right? So that's the, that's the fundamental idea behind the 150 people. So you have this community of 100 people. You have this atomic system, right, based on the atoms and the cells and all this stuff. Yeah. And then within the atom, what does life look like within the atom? We have a couple different aspects of it. You have the community life. You have working life, like productive life. And then you have, um, you have education. And the three are stacked on top of each other. So Andrew Carnegie famously said, incorrectly, that the first third of your life should be focused on gaining as much education as you can. The second half, second third, should be get, getting as much money as you can. And the last, or getting as much resources as you can. And the last, last should be giving it all away. The last third should be giving it all away. No. What we're doing is we take education extractionary methods of that second part are disastrous and they're terrible right yeah. so that that one i mean that one's horrible N not even mentioning how horrible the segmented approach is and the fact that it, yeah education doesn't go throughout life exactly so, yeah, so we so stretch education, education out through all life we stretch out community all throughout work. life and work th all throughout life 
Um, the Japanese don't have a word that means retire because the idea of fundamentally stopping doing stuff doesn't make it's any sense to them. It's horrible for your brain and it catalyzes Alzheimer's, we think. It does, yeah. yeah. The idea of retirement is a bad idea. Um, so, so, so here's what that looks like. You have these mentorship change based on the Aristotle, uh, Plato, Socrates model. When, it, when a child is born, um, of course they're born into a family and there are immediate people around them that are not their parents that are also helping to raise them. But I think, and we have to do research on what the right age is, but I think when they're around seven or eight, they're assigned to a mentorship chain. So that means they're assigned a mentor that's probably like 15. Can't but, they get that way earlier? Okay, so, yeah. so, so uh, that's what I'm saying. We need to test the numbers on this. Yeah, so yeah. maybe it's from their birth, yeah, right? Maybe yeah, it's from their birth. Totally. And they have, a, they have someone who's three years old and like someone who's six years old. Experts that are really good at looking at children Childhood when they're right away born and being like, look at what, where they're going, look at right. what they're gravitating towards. Exactly. We know what to help you know, put. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. doing like much better and yeah. earlier and ubiquitous testing of different cognitive abilities. So for example, um, I know because I've done learning profile testing that I have like really high auditory memory, but really terrible working memory and things like that. So if we could understand those things in kids earlier, you could yeah. assign them to the right mentorship chain to basically say, okay, this is a, a group of, of people that, that talks a lot. So this kid is gonna be, do very well with them because he has a high auditory memory. He's gonna be able to learn much better from them than a group of people that are much more about drawing out their ideas and stuff like that, which would be much better for a visual learner. So you can, that's part of the way that you can assign people to these, to these mentorship chains. But you're, you essentially, you put them in, in this lineage where the oldest person <coughs> um, is, is the oldest person in the society, basically, or one of the oldest people in, in that atom. In that cell. So you the, call that a, yeah, you call that an atom? In the 150. Yeah. Okay, and okay, so so you'd probably be getting. We'd so have to work out the numbers. An, an, an atom is an individual. An atom is one hundred fifty people, and a person is is an, in like, an atom. One hundred fifty people to an atom. To an atom. Yeah, and okay, then and then the atoms make up molecules. Yeah, and, and then those, those make cells. Make up cells, and you can make as many delineations sure between of that as, as you want. want. Um, point being, you know, you, shouldn't the humans be? <laughs> atoms and then the they make up 150 make up a molecule and sure then, sure just because yeah yeah the, okay, okay. The, the naming of yeah, it, yeah, it i'm using the atom as a yeah. as a model we could think of different names that are more meaningful this has been very good breakdown yeah 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 so th this is how the education system works is you have that that mentorship chain so this kid has a mentor that's a couple Most years older than a couple years Socrates, older than them. Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. Socrates, Alexander, Plato, Aristotle, Alexander, Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. Great. Yeah, the great. Alexander yeah. the Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's based on that model of stacking knowledge. Um, stacking knowledge. Stacking knowledge. Yeah, so, yeah. And Bloom Two Sigma. And Bloom Two Sigma. Together. Because is like just boom. Huge. Huge. huge right? Yeah. So if every kid had this, even if their mentor that's a couple years older than them is kind of bad, and even if their mentor that's 30 years older than them is kind of bad, there's going to be one or two in the chain of like 20 people that are in their mentorship chain that are going to give them something useful and care about them. What is the role of robotics and artificial intelligence in these, in these areas? I mean, does every cell gets to pick the role that it has, you know? Who's the first person to pick, you know, whether there are refrigerators, you know, how does the 150 people pick whether they want to eat, grow spinach or carrots, or will drones just be flying in whatever people want to order? I think, I think a lot of it will be self-sustaining in the community. So a lot of the stuff will be made within the community itself. Um, and so part of that is doing like, um, new innovations in agriculture. So this is, this is what we're talking about, slowing down technology and kind of refocusing it to the right things. So if we actually refocus technology on better, like sustainable agriculture stuff and on um, like making maker spaces better, yeah. this would help a lot. So what you do is you have within the atom, you have basically food that can sustain that atom and not necessarily much more because you don't want pop huge population growth, right? You have food um, that's being grown, maybe vertical gardens, maybe hydroponics, um, 
healthy, sustainable, good food that's being grown locally right next to them, doesn't need to be imported or flown in, right there. And then the community cooks it and distributes it to their, to their people. And then you have advanced um, maker spaces based on the model of Brett Victor. Um, and we can put links to this stuff in, in the bottom. He calls them seeing spaces. Um, Brett Victor, does he have Im images up? He he does. It, it, they're part of a keynote address, so it would it harder would harder to find. It would be harder to find. Okay. Um, the the idea being that when you have these uh, these maker spaces that are highly assisted, meaning yeah. a kid can walk in and basically say, "Oh, I need to make a new coat," and the environment kind of rearranges around them to be like, "All right, you need to cut out templates and do this stuff." Um, it helps them do that. So a lot of this stuff is kind of going back to this model of of making it yourself and, and whatnot, um, and the food being grown yourself and self-sustainability within the atom. Um, and so you don't need the trade economy as much. Okay, so you there, don't, would be, there would be some sort of a, a trade economy. There would be some sort not, of trade economy between the atoms. Not every single cell is gonna make computers, or not every cell is gonna make. Right, and probably something. no cells will be making computers. The computers will probably be made by the, like, by mechanized like AI stuff outside of the but society. why wouldn't food? Because that's more human? Because the food is something that the people in the community actually need. It's like a basic need thing. And like the maker space allows them to create other basic needs things like like clothing and repairs and stuff like that. And like oh, interesting. Like toys. So maker space Not is like a community space to solve the basic need. Yeah. Yeah. So those are kind of the building blocks is like is like the like the agriculture innovations and then the makerspace innovations like supply the basic needs of the community and of course like water purification you know all that stuff um, and kind of the the stuff that isn't within that category I think number one the demand for that stuff on a global scale will go down because you realize you don't need a lot of it oh that's this uh, decrease in consumerism which is interesting right. yeah, um, yeah. And if, and if you do need something, mm. you can have a burning man. I don't know how people man. will feel about like their yeah, degrees of freedom being cut to not be able to buy boats or yachts or whatever, or jets. Or so those are things we're going to have to work out, you know, like. We're going to have to work this, out. This is, a, I think, a, a lifetime thinking thing. You know, a lot of these ideas. Spiritual kind of, evolution would help yeah. protect, with that. Damn, this is, okay. Yeah, this is, this is too... This is too awesome and <laughs> um, yeah, and loaded with. So there's a lot here, a lot to, a lot to unpack. Yeah, this is a lot to unpack. It is. It is very cool, though. Um, I think you know some some very interesting takeaways. Um, we started talking about all that is being code, and then we talked about how to augment that code, mm -hmm. and then we talked about. Um, certain malevolences or benevolences being programmed mm -hmm. into the code. And then we got to, you know, memetics being able to be something that can help spread around the ideas um, in very profound ways. And then the, we have to change the built physical environment that we reside in. Mm -hmm. And that if that built, if that physical environment is built with basic needs and autonomy mastery, purpose, belonging, and gratitude, that that is pretty good, great code along with like a Dunbar number, uh, um, that, that there's a sense of self-regulation and self-governance that can come from that, mm -hmm. and that that can be our built environment way to, to make the code better. So this is kind of our little full Circle. Full circle, yeah. And it's so funny that we ended up actually, you know, talking about a lot of this in <laughs> episode 345. Yeah, we're getting right into, yeah. Before this. Um, yeah, and this was, this was super, super enlightening and fun. And Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad that we did this. I'm glad that we kind of like decided that. <laughs> Let's have you ask me stuff, and then it ended up being playing <laughs> tennis to figure out the code, yeah. and then we figured out that you know a lot of the code is the you know the pantheon, right. and um, and that's why I think we also gravitate towards one another. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And and the dialogue yeah. model as being right, going back to what we were talking about, Socrates to Plato to Aristotle, right? Yes. The dialogue as invented by Plato and Socrates, the Plato using 
Um, the, only, the only way we even know about Socrates is through the writings of Plato, where he's a character in the dialogue. You know, so I, I, I'm in um, a program at Stanford called SLEE, which is Structural Liberal Education, where we've been reading a lot of these texts. And before coming to SLEE, I always thought Socrates was a, was a dude we had writings from, ah, right? Yeah. Um, and what you realize, or what I, was, I learned when I was there, is that we know about Socrates through the writings, mainly of Plato, a little bit from Xenophon, his, mm -hmm. one of his other students, but mainly through Plato. And, and not just Plato writing about Socrates as this and that, yeah. but Plato writing a dialogue Between. in which Socrates is a character conversing with other interlocutors and kind of developing <coughs> his ideas. Um, and that as being the building block that led to this amazing chain of people from Socrates to Plato to Aristotle to Alexander the Great who were able to create so much um, that our world is based on now is through the dialogue model, is yeah. through the model of, of conversation and working out ideas together, Yes, yes right? Because yeah. I could have come in here and I, you know, or you could have asked me just write it out, and, and we could have, but yeah, it yeah. wouldn't. It wouldn't have resonated with me. It wouldn't have resonated yeah, with yeah. you. It wouldn't show how we arrived at those ideas. This is how we played the tennis match, and this is what we got as some of the cool hits back and exactly. forth that got us to where we got. That's it's kind of what Descartes was yeah. doing with the first principles, right? Like our first principles are the code, the 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 hardest of the permafrost, right? The first principles are you know, how many times your heart is beating. Yeah. And um, the how permafrost far... permafrost was a very important thing yeah. to remember as well. I'm glad And then we were able to build on up. top of that and say, yeah. okay, how do we improve that? How do we improve that yeah, after yeah. we establish the core? And I think yeah. if you watch this conversation, even when we look back on this conversation, can see how we arrived at certain ideas. And it wasn't yeah. like we were pulling these numbers, you know, out of thin air. Um, it's, you know... Correct. We're, we're Correct. pulling this stuff out of... Uh, out of the way the conversation is going and, and yeah, by yeah. stacking kind of the permafrost or the first principles the so on, yeah, the on top principles. of each other, yeah, yeah. on top of each other. Yeah. Whoa, this has been super fun, Ari. I'm just, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, you know, lit up with, with, you know, with your, with your beautiful 19 year old creative vision. Like I love it. And I love, <clears throat> I love thinking about how to, you know, bring this forth into, into the world. And it starts with this, you know, this, 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 these memes and, and the building Absolutely. out the permafrost and the new deployments and code. Thank you again. Thank you so wow, much. Wow, too really. straight. Too straight. Holy yeah. cow. That was super so, fun. Yeah. So, so, so much yeah, fun. I don't think, yeah. so technically that was like what, yeah, three straight hours of wow. conversation with that break of whatever 30 minutes yeah. in between the two one and a half hour segments. But cool. That was um, episode, this was episode 346. Go check out 345, the first episode in the conversation with Ari, and then this one as well. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. Much, much love to you. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please. Please. Yeah, please, please <laughs> let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Get talking to other people about what we talked about and more. And a uh, huge shout out to um, Alan, Alan Sakian, our, uh, our producer and director <laughs> for the show. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and go and build, everyone. Go and manifest your dreams in the world. Check out Ari's links below. Check out Simulations links below. Support the artists and entrepreneurs that you believe in. Build the future. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much, everyone, and we will see you soon. Peace. Peace. <laughs>